Welcome to Real Physics. This is our second encounter, and I will present to you again my guest, André Koch Assis from Brazil. He is a professor at the University in Campinas yes. and currently even in Germany. And nonetheless, we talk via Zoom because it's much easier to register. Yeah. I'm very happy to have you for this first session. I'm really uh yeah, I am really impressed of your style of work you are going to history you are researching the original papers you must be a lot knowledgeable in foreign languages by the way and you you do research really in the way i prefer and i wish it, it could be done more frequently in modern times because your, your approach is rooted in the very important findings of the past and we cannot do contemporary fundamental physics without taking into consideration and i definitely recommend to watch our first interview about electrodynamics and yes. you uh, the expert let's say on weber's and and ampere's electrodynamics so that being said we talk today about mark's principle and well it could be that we don't agree at 100 in our views because i mean i myself have worked on Max principle, maybe starting from another point of view. We will just find that out. And uh, But for the dis discussion, I think it could be even more interesting for our listeners. So, well, let's go to that topic. You might want, uh, I, I should introduce your book, Relational Mechanics. You see the cover here. I guess this is in essence what you have to say about Max yeah. principle. And for the rest, uh, Andre, go ahead and uh, tell us well, what you'd like to tell. In the first place, once more, thanks very much for this invitation, Alexander. It is a great pleasure for me. You are a very good friend of mine. And uh, as you said, I am now in Augsburg for one month now, in uh, October now, 2023. And I will stay here until the end of December doing research on Weber's electrodynamics. Mm -hmm. But today we are going to talk about uh, Mach's principle, which is just a fundamental and beautiful topic of physics. And yes. uh, I love it. And so I hope that we will convey to the listeners the mm -hmm. importance and the beauty of mm -hmm. the ideas of Ernest Mach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to make it clear up front, I mean, that's certainly something we we agree upon because I think Mach is a very underestimated figure and and mm. has done really fundamental research, has uh, obtained fundamental insights about the nature of gravity, and we should really every every fundamental theory, every possible. Uh, theory involving gravity, I mean, must deal with Max Sure, no doubt, no doubt. And on the other hand, we see modern contemporary physicists just dismissing that uh, yes. ideas yes. as philosophical stuff of the 19th no, century. No, not, not at all. Not to it care can, about, that's, that's absurd. Yeah. That can have even, uh, yes, experimental implications. People are trying experiments nowadays, mm -hmm. and so that's very important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, so, and again, a technical remark: we we're not going to write down many formulas. Once no, in a while, no, we can display no, no once formulas in a while, at all. Display a formula here, but the reader should be encouraged to go to the sources, which we will be in the comments. And yeah, yes, to today go. there will be not a single formula. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I mean, we could a little bit, as I said. Yes, yeah, uh, so we just talk about formulas, but it's okay. not necessary to be basic stuff, and so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if you allow me, I would yeah. uh, begin with uh, mm -hmm. Newton and some mm -hmm. of his problems and the what Ernest Mach saw problematic in Newton and his suggestions. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, we have the famous Newton's second law of motion. Mm -hmm. Force equal mass times acceleration. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, we solve problems, uh, uh, parabolic motion of projectiles and so on pendulum mm -hmm. and so on but then there is a fundamental question in newton's second law of motion 
the acceleration is the acceleration of the test body relative to what? Yes. So mm -hmm. We might think, oh, it is relative to the ground. That was that was mentioned by Schrödinger in 1925 in his article. Yes, a very Relative fundamental paper, Alexander. Said, you are yeah. right in the Annalen der Physik. Mm -hmm. And uh, we might think, oh, it is the acceleration relative to the airs. But Newton said no, because he also studied the motion of the airs around the sun, the orbit. So we might think, oh, it is relative to the distant stars. Newton said no. So what did Newton say? Newton said that this acceleration is the acceleration of the test body with mass m relative to empty space, which he gave a yeah, name, absolute space. absolute space. Yes. But it is essentially the vacuum. And, uh, the, and he knew that this concept was problematic. Mm -hmm. And even Leibniz did attack these ideas of empty space. How can you refer motion to something which is nothing? So Leibniz said, no, you should only refer motion of one body relative to another body. They can approach or move away, but not uh, something moving relative to nothing. So th that makes no sense, not, not only philosophically, but also practically. I did not but, know that Leibniz came up with that objection. I thought the yes, first one yes, was Bishop yes, Berkeley, indeed. but so Leibniz yes. was a precursor in, in that sense. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. There is a very yeah. famous... A controversy between Newton and uh, Leibniz, but the but they had many uh, also exchange of letters. Calculus, but uh, but uh, the this case, Newton yeah. was represented by Clark, one of his friends, and so there is this uh, Clark Leibniz correspondence and so on. It was at the end of Leibniz's life, but very deep, very important. But Newton knew that this concept of empty space which he called absolute space, was problematic. And uh, then he made a, a very important experiment. And his, this experiment is so deep. So I, I believe it is, together with Galileo's free fall experiment, it is one of the most experiments in the whole of physics. And it's yes. so important that Newton presented this experiment before the three laws of motion. In the okay. beginning of his book, Mathematical mm -hmm. Principles of Natural Philosophy, which mm -hmm. we, usually, we usually call it by Principia, the mm -hmm. Latin name. So it's so important that Newton, it is the basis of, uh, that Newton could say that it's acceleration relative to empty space. So he made an experiment to show the existence of the vacuum. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it is amazing what Newton did. And if you allow me, Alexander, mm -hmm. I would like to perform the experiment so that your viewers oh, have an idea great. of that's that. That's great. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because okay. So, I, w I, was, I was tempted to say everybody talks about this experiment, but nobody does it. But you did it already. Yeah. So... so uh, so this is the original experiment made by, made by Isaac Newton 300 years ago. Famous, Newton, famous as the Newton bucket. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Newton had a bucket and with water. Mm -hmm. As I am Brazilian, I put here coffee, Brazilian coffee. Okay. <laughs> that changes and, everything, I guess. <laughs> and, and also, yes, may change everything. So it is a different experiment. <laughs> and uh, also because with coffee, it is easier to see. Okay, yeah. so instead of an open bucket, and it's not round, the bottle is is it, is eccentric. Is it it's ju just a shampoo plastic bottle. Yeah, okay? yeah, but I mean, the, it's it's not it's not round. It's it's elliptic. No, no, uh, yes, it's a, a, a little thinner for, for than wine, yeah. so that it is easier to see the shape of the water. Yes, in Newton's experiment, the bucket was cylindrical. Mm -hmm. Mine is not, but ju just to so that people can see. But yeah. the experiment happens the same with a cylindrical or with this flattened bucket yeah. here. Yeah. So mine is a shampoo flask, a bottle with a Brazilian coffee. So the experiment begins like that. When the bucket and the coffee or the water, when they are at rest relative to the ground, the surface is flat, horizontal. Okay. Then Newton turns the rope many times. And uh, 
so that it turns it many times. And then he spins it in the opposite direction very fast. And what we should take notice is the shape of the water surface, okay? So I will just turn it here very fast. Mm -hmm. I hope you can see that it becomes... Yeah, it's a parabolical shape. Yeah. Yes, it's um, exactly a parabola. Yeah. Newton said okay. concave. Okay? Yeah, we can take screenshots and fit the parabola in here. Right? Yes, but if we perform the calculations, we obtain a pa exact parabolic shape. Mm -hmm. so, so the faster it spins, the higher it goes to the sides of the, the bucket. Okay? Yes. Yeah. And when it decreases its velocity, the concavity decreases until it goes flat again when they stop. So you just let it here stop. And mm -hmm. inside the, the bottle, there is no vacuum. It is just air. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. but, but you see, Newton, with this experiment, he proved, at least according to his reasoning, that yeah. the vacuum exists. <laughs> also, he, in Newton's bucket, it was open, in open mm -hmm. air. Mine is closed, but air goes inside here. Okay, There is no mm -hmm. vacuum here. So how could Newton prove that there is vacuum with this experiment 300 years ago? Uh, so the question which Newton asked was the following. Why is the water or the coffee uh, horizontal when it is at rest? and parabolic when it is uh, spinning so well and he said he, had, he got a tool to distinguish absolute space in rest from an accelerated frame yes so, so we might playing. say well the, the reason is obvious because when the water is at rest it is flat when it is spinning it is parabolic oh mm -hmm. that's the answer but then newton asks is spinning relative to what so there are three material uh, suspects, mm -hmm. possibilities to consider. The first is the rotation of the water relative to the bucket, okay, with whom the water is in contact. But then Newton said that this is not the case. Said that this is not the In case. the beginning, both are at rest, then Newton turns the rope, and releases the bucket. So in the beginning of the motion, only the bucket is spinning. I see, yeah, yeah. But, but the water, really water is decisive. still at rest. But there is friction between the water and the bucket. And the water begins to rotate with the bucket. Mm -hmm. And the faster it rotates, the higher it goes. Mm -hmm. And then Newton said, there is a point in which the water makes the revolution together with the bucket. How mm -hmm. could he know that? He didn't say, but if you just put some bits of paper floating mm -hmm. in water, you can see that it goes at the same rate as no, the of course. Yeah, yeah. And so now let us concentrate in these two situations. When both are at rest and when both are spinning together relative to the ground. Mm -hmm. So, I would so if you're in there in the B. bottle, you don't notice anything because everything yes, is revolving yes. at the same so rate. In the you... first case. The water is flat and there is no motion between the water and the bucket. But in the second case, the water is parabolic. But in this case, there is also no motion between the water and the bucket because both rotate together. So it is not motion of the water relative to the bucket, which makes the difference. Of course, of course. Yeah. So now we go to the second material suspect, which is the ears, of course. Because here, the water is at rest relative to the ground. And in this situation, the water is spinning relative to the ground. So we might say, well, the responsible for the concavity is not rotation of the water relative to the bucket, but rotation of the water relative to the ground. But then Newton argued that this is not the case as well. Why mm -hmm. not? Mm -hmm. Newton proved that the Earth is essentially spherical and it attracts everything towards the center of the Earth. And this happens, this is just the weight mm -hmm. of anybody. 
Mm -hmm. which is downwards oh, we could do even this experiment at the at the ISS space yes station, yes right? yes and that, would, that's possible there would be no attraction there would no be press yes, the water yes. would be just out there the, at the cylindrical the, the water wall, would metrical. become at at the yeah. wall cylindrical mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. we if yeah, yeah. we are in of space course, yeah. yeah all this but, is not the real problem or the, the yes, real but, but, problem but comes so and so why Newton said that it's not motion of the water relative to the ground because even when the water is spinning, the force which the air exerts on any molecule molecule of water is always pointing downwards. There mm -hmm. is no horizontal component. Of course. Mm -hmm. No matter if the water is at rest or is spinning. Mm -hmm. Because Newton's law of gravitation does not depend on velocity nor on acceleration. So we eliminated now the second material suspect, which is the airs, the ground. So there is a third and final material suspect, which is the reminder of the universe, the stars and galaxies. Newton didn't know about galaxies, but we know, okay? Mm -hmm. So we might say and not even um, uh, not even Mach <laughs> about galaxies. Not, not even Mach because yeah. it's only with uh, Hubble that we yeah. could uh, decide the question. In this situation, the water is essentially at rest or not accelerated relative to the stars and the galaxies. Mm -hmm. But in this case, the the water is spinning relative to the stars and the galaxies. So we might say this is responsible for the mm -hmm. curvature. Mm -hmm. But then Newton said, no, this is not the case. How could he know that? Because mm -hmm. Newton was so brilliant that mm -hmm. he made a very important calculation mm -hmm. in his book, Principia. Yeah. He showed but not you... only that a spherical shell attracts an external point as if the shell were in the center, but he also calculated the, the force exerted by a hollow shell in an internal particle mm -hmm. and he showed that when you integrate the force of all the walls vanishes. Mm -hmm. it vanishes it goes to mm -hmm. zero and I this see. only happens with forces which falls as one over r square as is the case with newton's law of gravitation I see. by symmetry if the body is in the center it will always be zero but when it is outside the center, inside the shell, the only thing which symmetry says is that the force will point towards the center or away from the center, but not its value. So, but so let, let me let, when let Newton me integrated for his force law one over r square, he mm -hmm. showed that it is zero. So, ju ju just to conclude, so when the water is at not accelerate relative to the stars and galaxies. Each one pulls in one direction, but the sum of all of them is zero in this case. Mm -hmm. But it remains zero in this case because Newton's law of gravitation does not depend on velocity nor on acceleration. That, that's that's clear. That, that's and great. So, so Newton mm -hmm. did eliminate all the possible material suspects: the bucket, the ground, the airs, and the reminder of the material universe, stars. And nowadays, we might say galaxies, black yeah. holes, anything okay. which is. Let me let me there. just clarify, since you have the historical knowledge, um, you're saying that Newton explicitly had this concern or this thought. Yes, so yes. My, what I learned, so to speak. Yes, and, what and, I learned and, that he kind and, of neglected that possibility, and then he was driven to that. Yes, to that possibility and you see, Alexander Murphy Newton to Muff, me. But, it or, is the greatest you, you mind say that Newton that had already discussed that. Yes, be the reminder, and and you're saying based on this theorem, which is correct. Yes, yes, it is, it is. that possibility. Yes, on false grounds because yes, his theorem was correct, but it's not that from that theorem follows that there can be no influence of the distant masses, right? So. So, so uh, yes, just, but, so so see, Berkeley and and Mach were kind of um, they might not have invented their argument. They just took it from Newton and said you falsely dismissed it. You dismissed it too early. That possibility. Yes, yes. Okay, that's interesting. And New Newton was such a brilliant guy. To me, he was the most 
greatest scientists of all time. Also, I myself, I criticize his theory, but I admire Newton the most. He is my greatest. Yeah, well, how would he has always, always been. Uh, that's an, always uh, be. even another topic, how much he did. I mean, he had to invent all the concepts. I mean, what yes. is velocity? What is mass to distinguish? Because everything, in, in, everything. In the, the dark ages, he was so had that mess clear. Of, yeah. You, you see, he put these experiments before mm -hmm. everything in the beginning of his books, mm -hmm. of his book, most important book. The mm -hmm. book most important in the history of science is Principia. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. we spend four years studying physics, mm -hmm. more yeah. four or five years doing PhD, and we never even know or discuss or mm -hmm. make the experimental Just, put the bucket. But it's so crucial. Mm -hmm. Just to make it clear now for everybody who, of, of the audience who might not be familiar with the Marx principle, that's the essence of Marx yes. principle, Marx critique on that third concern as you yes uh, dubbed it uh that that possibility that the distant masses could influence what yes. we perceive as absolute space you are precise alexander you are precise so yeah. ernest mach it, it was an austrian physicist we usually think that he was a philosopher but he was an experimental physicist yeah and he course. came 200 years after newton yeah and the uh, then when he did need to teach mechanics for medical students, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so he did need to think about uh, the concepts to explain to his students. And so he discovered that he himself was not clear. So he went back to the originals and then he did disagree with Newton. He said, it, it cannot be a motion relative to empty space mm -hmm. causing Maybe the we can display that shape famous of water. Quote, no. I, will put, I will put that famous quote. It's it's uh, it's like what would what would happen if the yes. if the thickness of the walls would increase and e mass and so on uh, hundreds of miles. Yes, yes. And that's of course. I think this is a brilliant idea. I mean, if yes. you heard it for the first time, it's like wow. And then, yes, of, of course. course, we are talking now. Now we are talking of distant galaxies, but uh, which were not known at the time. But it has nothing to do with with the. Yes. details of galaxies but with the very concept that all the masses in in the out there in the universe might have that influence and yes, on what we perceive sure. on absolute space and in turn also on inertia and gravity. yes and, and so Ernest Mach said Newton must be wrong yeah. he, and he, Mach he knew that it was not the ground the earth the responsible for the curvature as you said, Alexander, if we can perform this experiment in uh, the space station and so on, it will not be parabolic because the Earth is not there. But the water will go to the sides of the, yes. mm -hmm. the, the bucket. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but Mach said Newton must be wrong from philosophical point of view. There is no motion re relative to I, I would hesitate. I would hesitate a little bit. I, I would say he said that. Newton could be wrong because actually nobody can perform the experiment yes, because let rotate no the can, galaxies around. Yes, right? no so one can perform. Time, but he, but Mach said that Newton's absolute space it was a monstrosity in physics that we must get ri rid of it. Yes, it he challenged explicit. he challenged that concept of absolute yes. space, also of absolute time, by the way. Yes, said. by the way, as well. And that uh, he challenged that for a good reason. Let's say yes, that, that's okay. So, but the experimental proofs. What experiment... did Mach say? Mm -hmm. He said the concavity of the water in this experiment is not relative to the motion of the water relative to the bucket, and not relative of the water relative to the ground with the ears. But it must be rotation of the water relative to the reminder of the universe. In yes. his times, he spoke only about the fixed stars. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we can say stars and galaxies. Mm -hmm. And then, Alexander, as you know quite well, he proposed a thought experiment, which I will propose to your audience here now. You can have some time to think about it. What did Ernest Mach propose? So... I will now let the bucket at rest in, in, in the table here, okay? Mm -hmm. I will let it at rest here. 
Later on, I, I appear my face again. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ernest Mach proposed the following. What we suppose that in Newton's real experiment, when the bucket is spinning once a second, mm -hmm. the water goes up to the border of the bottle. Okay, yes. if I spin it once a second, it goes up to the border. Now, Mach said, what will happen if I let the bucket at rest here on the ground and in imagination, if I rotate the whole universe around the bucket, around the axis of the bucket, also once a second. So what will happen if I let the bucket at rest and if I could perform this experiment and if I rotate all the stars and galaxies yeah. together yes. around the axis of the bucket once a second. Yes, yes. Suppose yes. that in Newton's experiment, the water did rotate clockwise. Now I let the water at rest and rotate the universe once a second anti-clockwise. Right. So the relative motion is exactly the same. What will happen to the surface of the water, to the water itself? Mm. So According there are, to Mach, it will curve again. Yeah. yeah, so there are two main possibilities. But I will let the audience, each one, think about that. What each one of you... We, we let us know, let us know in the comments now. what you think about the, the experiment, which has not been done yet. <laughs> yes, and this experiment. So each one can give any answer which he wishes, because mm -hmm. this experiment has never been done and will never be done. Yeah, yeah. Because However, I mean, there are other possibilities. Other possibilities, but not this one, because it is Obviously. impossible to yeah. rotate. But the simple fact that, I mean, if you rotate it at a certain uh, frequency, I mean, the outer parts of the universe would, would be superluminal motion. So yeah, you have but, already a problem here. But in, anyway, in, anyway yeah. it is impossible to rotate all the universe around the, the span once mm -hmm. a second relative yeah. to the ground. So it yeah. is completely a thought experiment. Mm -hmm. So each one of the audience can give any answer because no yeah. one knows the right answer and no mm -hmm. one will never know the right yeah. answer because this yeah. is impossible, this experiment. Yeah. Yeah. It can suggest other possible experiments, but mm -hmm. this one specifically, it is impossible to do it, to perform it. It yes. will always be impossible. And let's also say that Newtonian mechanics does not distinguish here, right? Yes, and so now, now I will give some answers okay mm -hmm. so i give two opposite answers now let's no let, let's let's just say that newtonian dynamics would i mean it, it's impossible to distinguish for from newton newtonian mechanics there would be no reason whatsoever why the water should curve even yes, if the universe... you are perfect alexander you are right. perfect so, so according to newton if mm -hmm. you rotate the universe once a second around the axis doesn't of the bother bucket, doesn't bother the bucket yeah the, the, the water will remain flat stationary yeah. why yeah. Yeah. because of newton theorem it yeah. is theorem 31 of the principia that if we integrate the force of a spherical shell on an internal point no matter where this internal point i see is i see i, I, I understand shell, i understood they, they cancel they go to zero Mm -hmm. And what happens if you rotate the shell? It will yeah. remain zero. Why? Yeah. Because yeah. Newton's law of gravitation does not depend on velocity nor on acceleration. And that that causes serious doubts about the validity of the the foundation of the about the foundation of Newton's law. Correct. Yes, of let course. Let me let me check. Maybe we should because this is an important point, and this we can crucial. also maybe you wanted to talk about anyway on Foucault's pendulum but we can, can a, a little later just, just, let's so just we, we, finish yeah. this it, one it can be rephrased in that terms yes too, yes it can talk, talk about but that later let us okay, just, just continue mm -hmm. continue with this one so uh, what would happen according to Ernest Mach according to Ernest Mach in the real experiment the curvature of the water, the parabolic shape, is because it is spinning relative to the distant universe. Yes. So if I let it at rest and rotate the universe in the opposite direction with the same angular velocity, once a second, then the water should go to the sides of the bucket, should become parabolic, and should go up to the border of the bucket, so that it will be exactly the opposite of 
Newtonian mechanics, and the water should be just like in Newton's real experiment. So we have two opposite predictions here, but we don't know the real answer and we will never know, okay? Anything can happen. The water can explode. Anything can happen when you rotate the universe. Mm -hmm. But th these are the two main uh, mm -hmm. possibilities which people consider, okay? Either nothing will happen, and if anyone in the audience thinks that the water will remain flat, it's okay because mm -hmm. we don't know. But yeah. then this person is a Newtonian, also mm -hmm. he may not know it. He's yeah. thinking just like Newton. Mm -hmm. If anyone thinks that the water as the relative motion is the same, so the effect should be the same, so the water should be parabolic, this mm -hmm. person, without knowing it, mm -hmm. is a Machian. Not, not from the planet Mars, but following the ideas of yeah. Ernest Mach. Okay? He would be maybe a we should, Maybe we should, if we talk about Mach's principle here, maybe we should, I mean, this is the starting point. I mean, what, what we discussed, it, it's in my view, it's kind of one fourth or one third of what you would yes. consider yes, Mach's sure, principle. Sure. Maybe we can go ahead and, and, and that, I mean, that in turn, we, we are talking about how to define systems at rest and how yes, to define... Yes inertia that's yes, the central exactly. uh, concept and, and in this and case latin, we are utilizing latin... as our frame of reference the ground always so mm -hmm. it's not an abstract yeah. uh, so frame most, of principle so it, it is consequence... always the ground in this case okay mm -hmm. it's a real material uh frame of reference based yeah. on the ground well, oh, well Mach, oh, yes. Mach would def would define the proper frame of reference. He said is defined by all the other masses in the universe. Yes, that's yes, what determines yes. your inertia. Yes, right? exactly. Yes, that's, that's what determines inertia, and that's and then uh, he added another crucial step, which I think anticipated the principle of equivalence yes. because already Mach equated somehow inertia and gravity yes and he suggested that if the distant masses in the universe in the universe are responsible for defining inertia yeah that was what gives the the inertia to the masses also the distant masses should be the reason of gravity yes, yes. And that's another wonderful extension and and another <laughs> Uh, and as, as you deep said, thought, Alexander, uh, one of my books is called. Yeah, uh, we already uh, displayed that. Yeah. Relational mechanics. And so the bucket mm -hmm. is in the cover. Okay. These yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> this uh, can. Uh, I would not now go, go to a very simple experiment as well, but which has deep connections with Mach's principle, mm -hmm. which is just free fall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Newton's apple experiment. Let's suppose that this glass here is Newton's apple. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I mm -hmm. release, it falls to the ground with mm -hmm. a constant acceleration, yes. 9.8 meters per second square. Okay. So th this is the experiment. And Galileo was the first to show that if we perform this in vacuum, so all bodies will fall with the same acceleration no matter their weight, no mm -hmm. matter their shape, no matter their chemical constitution, for instance. I guess the vacuum was later, right? It was the... Yeah, the, the, the vacuum the of Pisa, was built uh, on later, but from his reasoning, yeah. he mm -hmm. concluded that if you can eliminate the friction due to air, say mm -hmm. all bodies will fall with the same yeah. acceleration. For instance, a lead ball in the, a small cork Mm -hmm. They have different uh, chemical compositions, different weights, and different shapes, but they will fall Density. with the same acceleration. Yes. So this is a very deep result. But moreover, when we calculate this rate of acceleration with classical ne Newtonian mechanics, F equal ma, so the F is the weight of the body, which is mass times the gravitational constant, G. So the two masses cancel, the acceleration will be equal to the small g. And uh, this small g is capital G, mass of the Earth, divided by the radius of the Earth square. So mm -hmm. this acceleration is proportional to the mass of the Earth. Right. Okay? 
of 9.8 meters per second square. Uh, and so Galileo or Newton specifically predicted that if we could go to another planet, not, not specifically, but it is implicit in his calculations, mm -hmm. that if we could go to another planet with a smaller mass, the free fall acceleration would be smaller than 9.8 meters per second right, squared. Right. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, uh, since the Apollo mission in 1969, men went to the moon and then they performed the free fall acceleration, a hammer and a, a feather. And they just mm -hmm. fall together because there is no air in the moon, mm -hmm, essentially. Mm -hmm. Moreover, they, they showed experimentally that the acceleration, free fall acceleration in the moon is one sixth of the acceleration on the ground. It's much right. slower mm -hmm. in the moon, essentially because the mass of the moon is smaller than the mass of the Earth. There's yes. also a difference in size, but I will here concentrate only on the masks, okay? So we know that this is correct, that the free fall acceleration is proportional to the mass of the attracting body. Of course. But as you said, Alexander, according to Ernest Mach, the inertia of any body, its resistance to acceleration, is due to its interaction with the distant bodies. According to Newton, this should not be the case. According, Newton said that the inertia is an intrinsic property of right. the body, an innate property right. of the body. Right. But right. Marx right. said it must be wrong as well. It must be connected with the distant mass yeah. in the universe. You phrased that beautifully, like something like an, an in a property that property inherent to all masses. Right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. And you see, as you said, Alexander, in the bucket experiment, if we might increase the, the thickness of the bucket, mm -hmm. the result would also be different, according to Ernest Mach, not mm -hmm. according to Newton. But I will, won't go into details, but you are right. Mm -hmm. Precise, Alexander. So going back to the apple, to the free fall of the apple, if I decrease the mass of the attracting body, like if I go to the moon, the acceleration decreases, it, it comes slower. Okay, mm -hmm. instead of this 9.8 meters per second, it comes slowly in slow motion. Okay, but you see, uh, if when, when I say that I decrease the mass of the ears, this should be equivalent of repeating the experiment on the ears, but increasing the masses of all the stars and galaxies. Yes, shouldn't make because it, yeah. it should be the, just like in yeah, the yeah, yeah. I, I, see I can rotate the, the bucket or let the bucket rest and rotate the universe in the opposite direction. I yeah, can yeah. increase the mass of the Earth or decrease the mass of everything else. Correct. So Correct. according to Ernest Mach, if I repeat the experiment on the ground, I don't change the mass of the Earth, mm -hmm. nor the mass of the apple or of mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. flask here, but if I increase the masses of the galaxies and the stars, I should also decrease the acceleration of free fall. I see, I see. It I see. This is a very. I mean, I, I, I think that's a very nice visualization of the of the central thought. I still, I would, I mean, I, I would phrase it in another manner, and you tell me if I think it's equivalent. I think at the very end, it boils down to the gravitational constant. You yes, know, yes, that, you are I perfect. Mean, one of one of Mark's statement would be or suggestions would be the gravitational constant must be somehow dependent on the mass distribution yes, in the yes, universe. And you are precise, right. Alexander. And I know yes. that you have done a very deep research on this topic. And mm. you are maybe one of the world specialists on this uh, influence of know. the distant <laughs> mass on the gravitational constant of Newton. And you are right mm -hmm. because. Uh, we can say that any theory which implements Mach's principle, the mm -hmm. capital G, the uh, mm -hmm. uh, fundamental constant of acceleration of Newtonian mechanics, will not be a constant any longer. It should yeah. be a function of the yeah. density of matter in the universe. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we should we should mention here that there is kind of an experimental strong evidence for that statement, which was known nor to Newton, nor to Mach, because they didn't know about the size of the universe. But what we observe, we can display this very simple formula 
that the gravitational uh, constant, in, if you talk about orders of magnitude, it's equal to c squared, the speed of light, times the radius of the universe yes. by the mass of the universe, right? And yes. it's sensational that this is a coincidence in orders of magnitude, because there is no explanation whatsoever yes. from and Newtonian And these coincidences, they are from, not from coincidence a philosophical point of view, it's, it's very unsatisfactory that you have to postulate a godlike number that rules yes. and governs all the motion in the universe, and oh, why no, that no. number and why not another number. So we, we got to explain that. Okay? Yes, sure, that's, you're right. That's and the, the uh, I mean, I, I think Mach would have been happy about this. Yes, know? and you see, any theory which implements Mach's principle should lead essentially to the following conclusion, that mm. the Newtonian uh, universal constant capital G should be inversely proportional to the mean density of matter in the universe. Okay? And, uh, okay. and then um, if you... Hold on a second, hold on a second. Um, not sure if it's really the let's let's phrase it let's let's stay with the the more general statement the mass distribution in the universe. Yes, yes. We have okay, this strange yes. thing that the distance appears only in the first power, and if you talk about the mass density, it would be mass divided by the third power of a length. You know. Yes. So I would, and and it appears that we have that dependency involving uh, length. Yes, it, the it first will power. be. It will anyway, be there. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It will be, but it, essentially the mass should appear in the denominator, the, the yes, mass of yes, the reminder clear. of the universe. That's clear. I mean, you see that in the units. Of the universe. Just, just look at the units. The, yes, the, of course. The gravitational of course. constants. You have the kilograms in the denominator and somehow yes. that must and if be... you put that in the acceleration of free fall, remember that is capital G, mass of the Earth divided by radius of the Earth square. So mm -hmm. if the capital G is inversely proportional either to the mass of the universe or to the mean density of mass in the universe, so if you decrease this mean density of mass in the universe, you increase the acceleration. Or the opposite, if you make, if you double or triple the mass mm -hmm. of all stars and all galaxies, you mm -hmm. should decrease by two or by three the free mm -hmm. fall acceleration. So that that's fascinating, but nothing yeah. of nothing of this kind happens in Newtonian mechanics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here enters also Dirac's famous hypothesis of large numbers. You know, yes, he yes, speculated yes. about the a time variation of the gravitational constant, and that could be perfectly in line with that Mach yes. thought because yes. we have a dynamic universe. We have. Uh, at least uh, more masses become visible yes. and the visual the, the, the visible universe also increases so yes. we have some something that changes in, in yes that, that so yes you are right and that that is the large number hypothesis of dirac it's another way of looking at mach's principle because Even he then, didn't realize that Dirac did not did not mention Mach. No, yeah. no, he didn't yeah. mention that. But mm. if we have this point of view, then we see because G will be capital mm. G will be connected with yes. Hubble's constant or the yeah. radius, Hubble's radius, and so on. Yeah. And so it will be there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so it's another way of looking at the same equation which Dirac did obtain. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. 10 to the fourth power and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you will allow me, Alexander, I would of go course. to a third topic, mm -hmm. which just for the listeners to understand more about these Machian ideas. Mm -hmm. Just let me to give just to give credit to 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 people in the history that we didn't invent all this stuff. Right? No, there, no, there, not at all. There should be, I guess, there should be mentioned. Um, uh, well, maybe it's the first one, Schrödinger. We already had Schrödinger. Yes, yeah. and I, I call we attention, had... Alexander, to this paper by Schrödinger. It was published in 1925 in Annalen der Physik, and yes. it has already been trans translated into English mm -hmm. uh, in a book called uh, Mach's Principle from mm -hmm. Newton's mm -hmm. Bucket to Quantum Gravity, published mm -hmm. by Julian Barbour and Pfister. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, it was a conference which took place here in Germany. I did came, I came mm -hmm. even to this conference as well. And mm -hmm. uh, in these uh, proceedings of this conference, there is a full translation by Julian, I believe it was by Ooh, Julian, Babur. Babur. sure, of this paper by Schrödinger. So I yeah. suggest 
strongly mm-hmm. that yeah, the, it's, your audience should yeah yeah i will i will just play that yeah it's also amazing how many cosmological in- insights should ring ahead and yeah. there is another guy to mention the british egyptian cosmologist dennis sharma dennis sharma yes three beautiful article i can yes. display it here and he he said basically the same thing and yes newton's theory is incomplete because it doesn't justify the the definition of absolute space and yes. it has an arbitrary number the gravitational constant yes yes and that was this paper by sham is also very mentioned illuminating. here and then and then also robert dickey he's famous robert for, dickey, other yes. stuff, for being an uh, outstanding experimentalist but he had very deep thoughts about mach's principle and he came up with all the also that uh, that theory related to mach's principle and yes and sure didn't know and uh, and first of all, also Einstein. I mean, yeah, not sure. Direct way, but the, the not whole the approach. whole of Einstein's general theory of relativity is, was could Einstein's be phrased idea in a to way. implement Mach's principle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in I made a lot of videos about the variable speed of light. And yes, people can watch here, so I will not. Good point. I mean, Good point. I could take over the conversation now, but I don't. It's it's your interview. So just to mention these these yes, references. it is. But you are right. It's very important. Accurate. And even I ahead. believe that this paper by Schrödinger, mm-hmm. maybe it was the last one before the Schrödinger equation, because it's from the same year, 1925, in Annalen der Physik. Very interesting paper. So so I call maybe attention to this paper. In that's I should, I mean he that's the the famous story about his lover being in a skiing vacation with, with this quantum mechanical paper. If that, that was, was in the, the quantum mechanics, yes. But it maybe, was, I don't know, was maybe because the same trick. Yeah. Maybe the cosmology came later or, or maybe, maybe lover, before. You know, just, I, summer I, I, holiday, I, we don't I'm know. I'm not sure, yes. But it is the same year anyway. So Very creative. Yeah. It was his Annus Mirabili, 1925, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so your third point. You yeah, said. so the third point is... How could it either Galileo or Newton prove that the Earth spins once a second around its axis? Mm-hmm. You see, uh, we might say, well, that's simple because we, we have a day and night. But you see, what we Not see is the motion of the sun. The sun rises and the sun sets. Not mm-hmm. the Earth. But then people say, oh, but this is just a point of view. Yes, this is just a point of view. If you uh, rotate around your own axis, you will see the universe spinning. But, yeah, but not if you but talk about this accelerated frames. This is only frames. kinematic. And the Greeks knew about day and night. They knew about the seasons. And mm-hmm. for 2,000 years, we did believe that the Earth is stationary. Mm-hmm. And everything rotates around the Earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Galileo could not find a real proof. He thought about the tides, but he theory of the tides has has show, has been shown to be wrong mm-hmm. okay so he could not but newton could newton is fascinating and in the principia he made a very important calculation about the shape of the earth so he supposed that the earth at least uh, when it was formed or it 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 was essentially liquid in its somehow elastic it or was. fluid. It mm-hmm. was a fluid, okay? Mm-hmm. And just like the bucket, when I spin uh, the bucket, the water goes to the mm-hmm. side. So if I have a, a floating a drop, a drop of water, yeah, yeah. In, in in space station, okay. Yeah. If I just spin this mm-hmm. drop. Around its axis, Kept together by its own gravity, but it, should, it shouldn't be very clear. It uh, yeah. flattened at the yeah. poles. The yeah. distance between the north and south points of this drop mm-hmm. is smaller than the distance between east and west. Okay. Mm-hmm. By the way, who did measure measure that for the first time? It's it's like Isaac 6, Newton. 000, Isaac Newton. Six thousand uh, three hundred seventy-eight at the equator and six thousand three hundred fifty-six at the poles, right? Yes, yes. But New- and you're saying that Newton, Newton, was- Newton, not only made the the discussion, but he performed a, an amazing calculation. No, I mean measuring. We're talking of measurements. No, that measurement came fifty years after Newton, but mm-hmm. the prediction was Newton's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that is 
amazing what Newton did because it is an extremely difficult calculation. It's I not believe. simple mm -hmm. because you need to consider the attraction of an ellipsoid of revolution. Yes, yes. Not, yes. not a spherical shell, an ellipsoid of revolution acting on a fluid which can move. In Newton, in this uh, ellipsoid, is spinning, moreover, around its mm -hmm. axis. Well, you have also, also different densities that consider yes, the yes. And so, gets, which were not Newton, known at the time. And, and not Newton even, I mean, did a very about... precise prediction, not measurement, but a prediction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he showed that if, if the Earth is somewhat fluid and if it is spinning, then the distance between the North and South Pole should be slightly smaller than the distance between East and West, okay? And he could calculate precisely, make a prediction. And the, the ratio of the larger diameter to the smaller diameter is exactly, as Newton calculated, 1.004. That is 0.4%, okay. very okay. small. It's very okay. small. But Newton did calculate it precisely. Mm -hmm. And this is the same calculations that we do nowadays in advanced courses of mechanics, classical mechanics. Okay? And this factor is proportional to the omega square, to the mm -hmm. angular rotation of the ears. So, but then we have once more the question. The ears is flattened because it is rotating relative to what? Obviously, it's not relative to itself. But can it, but that that's for for small omega, right? Because I mean, if you, I mean, if if you have the centrifugal force equal to the, uh, yes, to, but but it is exactly the, the centrifugal force. It would just disappear, force. right? So it, it is the, the centrifugal force. You are correct. It is. The yeah, but if if this if this equates the gravitational force, then you have no you have no uh, fluid you have no no solid body any longer. So yes, you do have because disappear. The, only the gravitational force makes the Earth become spherical. Mm -hmm. I when see. When you add the centrifugal force, it def def it deviates. Now that's clear. I'm just wondering if that is right really now. if that's if that uh, formula is really for high omega that quadratic. Well, he did increase. he did calculate that for the Earth itself, which is I once see. a day specifically. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. So when you rotate just like the Earth once a day, the amount of flattening is 0.4 percent, mm -hmm. very precise. Mm -hmm. And but that was only verified 50 years after Newton. And when they did verify it, and nowadays we can even see that from satellites and so on, and the Newtonian calculation is precise. Mm -hmm. It is confirmed by the observation of the shape, real shape of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? And now comes the question. What would happen if I let a spherical Earth made of fluid, water, for instance, at rest and consider the north-south axis and they spin the universe once a day in the opposite direction. Will the Earth remain spherical or will it be flattened? Once again, I will let some seconds here for your audience to think about. <laughs> the Machians will argue that it's flattened, right? <laughs> yes, of course. And how much? 0.4%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only will it be flattened, but mm -hmm. it should be exactly the same amount as in the real situation. I see. Mm -hmm. And what will the Newtonian say? That the Earth will remain spherical. Why? Because of Newton theorem 31. No mm -hmm. matter if the surrounding, because the stars and the galaxies, they make like many spherical shells of matter mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the Earth. Okay, okay. And each of these spherical shells composed of mm -hmm. stars or galaxies, mm -hmm. the net force is zero mm -hmm. on any molecule of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And it so, will remain zero when these mm -hmm. spherical shells are spinning mm -hmm. around the Earth. Mm -hmm. Because Newton's law of gravitation does not depend on velocity and acceleration. I see. So this this already this uh, not and perfectly so, spherical form of the Earth is experimental evidence for... Yes. The of, of the real rotation right. of the so, Earth. Because so, according to Newton, 
if it were the universe who did spin once a, a day around the Earth, the Earth would be spherical. I see. As it is not. So all the Newtonians conclude that this is an empirical proof that the Earth is really spinning and not the opposite. Because the day and night you can attribute to anyone, either the soul, the sun rises and sets, or the sun is stationary mm -hmm. and the Earth spins in the opposite direction once a day. You will see the same phenomena, the same with seasons and so on. But so, not the shape of the years. So the shape why do you of think the years is decisive in Newtonian mechanics? So why do you think it took two hundred years until Foucault made that ex quite simple experiment? Quite simple. Here? I don't know, but no one thought about that, and only Foucault. He only uh, Foucault's pendulum. We should say that. I mean, it, it's it's a pendulum maintains the. Um, it's it stays in the same uh direction right and yes, if the, the earth revolves of, uh, we uh, we, we seem to perceive a change in that direction yeah? yes and that's many many famous uh Foucault yes. pendula exists so but Foucault was the first one but to do that ju 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 was just to close, just to close the question of, of the rotation of the years mm -hmm. so if once more if we could perform the experiment we could know who is right Newton mm -hmm. or Mach, but mm -hmm. once more we cannot do this experiment. Right. But you see, Newton was so brilliant because he found an uh, empirical evidence which happens only in his theory due to the rotation of the Earth. Because if the Earth were stationary and the universe did spin once a second around the Earth, the Earth would not be flattened. Right. But Ernest Mach came and said, "This is no proof." Because in both situations, the ears would be flattened. Mm -hmm. We cannot perform the experiment. Yes. But so yeah. now, now we can go to what you said about Foucault's pendulum, because this is also crucial, Alexander. So Foucault made this experiment in 1851. Right. So uh, what is this experiment? I, I will just simulate it with this pen, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, suppose that we are in an inertial frame of reference. And I have a, a bob here, a, a, a string or a thread, and I release the pendulum and it begins to oscillate. Okay. What are the forces acting on the mass? It is the weight pointing downwards and the tension along the string. Right. These two, these two forces, they form a plane. So if I release the pendulum at rest, it must always remain in this plane. The because the, same two, plane. the, the yes. two forces are always in this plane. And, and I will say that this plane is parallel to this wall here on my side, okay? If we are in an initial frame, the pendulum should always be parallel to this wall, real wall here, okay? But when we perform the experiment on the ground, suppose that I am now at the North Pole, exactly at the North Pole. If I release a real pendulum at the North Pole, parallel to this wall, the plane of oscillation, parallel to this wall here, real wall, I am in an igloo in the, the North Pole, okay? Mm -hmm. And there is a wall there, and I release a, a pendulum, okay? And it parallel to this wall, this is my reference, the ground, always the ground, not an, an arbitrary observer, the ground. So I have this wall here, and I release it, and it should always remain parallel to this wall because the weight mm -hmm. and the tension in the, in the stream, they compose a, a plane which is parallel to this wall. But if I am at the North Pole, this is not what takes place in reality. In reality, the plane of oscillation begins to precess. The pendulum is in the beginning parallel to this wall. Then yeah. it becomes like, like that. Then it becomes like that. Then uh, at uh, six hours later, it will be the plane of os oscillation will be orthogonal to this wall. Mm -hmm. Then it continues. Then more six hours. And then it remains once more parallel to this wall. Then after 18 hours from the beginning, it is orthogonal to the wall again. And 24 hours after the beginning of the experiment, if there is no friction, and if the pendulum continues, but don't stop 
oscillating, it comes once more parallel to this wall. So the plane of oscillation well, to be precise, of the pendulum 23, 23 hours and 56 six seconds. Minutes is and talk and about start time. 56 uh, yeah. uh, minutes mm. and so on. So it's almost, I mean, just uh, putting mm. round numbers here, but it, it mm. goes exactly in 23 hours and 56 mm. minutes. Okay. Mm. 23 yeah, that hours was fantastic. and 56 that, 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 minutes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So then, then we you say, but what is strange? Because mm -hmm. there is no reason for the pendulum to, because the two forces, they make a plane and you re release the pendulum at rest. Mm -hmm. It must remain, but mm -hmm. it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It just does. Yeah, I mean, historically, historically, that was the proof, the 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 eventual proof that the Earth was spinning yes, around. Yes, but but axis. in reality, we don't observe the rotation of the Earth. What we right. do observe is the rotation of the plane of oscillation of the pendulum relative to the yeah. wall, relative yeah. to the ground. Yeah. I mean, what you I mean, you can call that Foucault's experiment another, maybe more sophisticated version of. Of Newton's bucket, because yes, and also of Newton's flattening of the Earth as and well. It determines it determines what we perceive as an unaccelerated frame. Yes, it can determine an unaccelerated frame which has no rotation. And yes, uh, so people say that how can you explain that in Newtonian mechanics? So in Newtonian mechanics, what textbooks say is that. When you release the pendulum in the North Pole, the plane of oscillation remains fixed in empty space. In absolute space, yes. Yes, which is vacuum, empty space. Mm -hmm. And it is the air which is spinning downwards the pendulum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as we are on the air, we are spinning with the air, and relative to us who are spinning with the air, we see the plane of oscillation moving relative to us who mm -hmm. are on the North Pole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. So that, that, that is the standard explanation of the textbooks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as you know quite well, Alexander, there is a remarkable coincidence here. Yes. Because I can perform this experiment inside my closed igloo, inside yes. this room. And I found that it makes one turn in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Then I, I take my jacket, go in the outside, in the igloo in the winter, have a camera, point it upwards, press the button, and let it press for mm -hmm. three hours, let's say. I see. And what do I observe? If I am in the North Pole, there is one star, very bright star, which is essentially aligned with the direction of the axis of rotation of the Earth. It doesn't Polaris, move, yeah. essentially, mm -hmm. the North Pole stars. Mm -hmm. but all the others, we will see that they rotate mm -hmm. clockwise yes. around yes. the ground. Yes. And as a remarkable coincidence, it in six hours, if I have a, a, a certain uh, constellation which is in front of me, after mm -hmm. six hours, it is orthogonal to me. Yeah. After uh, 12 hours, it is in my back. After yeah, yeah, 18 hours, yeah. it is in yeah. my left. And that's then precisely, after that's precisely. Hours, it came back in front of me. Yeah. And so, and so the pendulum follows exactly the motion of the stars around the ears. That's precisely the point, and and I think you have you have to let that sink in because mo I mean we're very we're, we're accustomed to that fact, and nobody so nobody wonders and nobody reflects. But it's really something remarkable you have to wonder about. So yes, so because... let, let's phrase it this way. I mean, you have you have one system, be it Newton's bucket or be in Foucault's pendulum, in which you dynamically determine what is absolute space at rest yes. right and this is a local experiment you don't look yes. at the, don't look at the universe and say rest is 
the, the system, the frame in which I don't perceive any century. Yes, force. there is no curvature okay. of but water. But you don't need no the rest plat, of the universe. No and for Newton's, the for Newton's theory, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And then you have another method, of course, to to determine what is at rest. Look out there in the stars. I mean, yeah. back then you had stars. Now we have even quasars, even better. Yes, yeah, yes Very yes. precisely. And that is what is done. Yeah. Yes. So I, know, I don't know how many digits uh, accuracy... And you observe this and say, okay, observationally, this is my unaccelerated system at rest, which does not rotate. If I look out there and out yes. there, and, uh, so very precise. And what a coincidence that these two systems yes. coincide. The, the, I mean, the, it's this, this, mathematically, you know, it's, it's this cannot be a it's, coincidence. It's an, it's an unbelievable coincidence and yes. very... I mean, and, and the, start, uh, the, the startling thing is, and, and, and it's it's irritating that Newton does not explain that coincidence. Yes, of it's course, no one, no one, no one. That's yeah. also Sharma in his paper said. Yes, Newton does not explain that coincidence. Yes, not should, at all. Should make us worry. I mean, yes. the very foundations of of Newton mechanics. And by the way. Um, General relativity does not resolve the problem. No, either. not at all, as well. And yeah. if you see, if I if we go back to the Foucault's pendulum, mm -hmm. if I am in the North Pole, the pendulum follows the motion of the stars. If I am in the South Pole, when it rotates anti-clockwise, but as I myself I am now upside down, I also in the South Pole. The pendulum yeah, follows the course. motion no of yes. the stars and galaxies because mm -hmm. in the South Pole they move anti-clockwise. Mm -hmm. So and why should why should it? Why should it? Because yes, why you should prove it? Prove that it does not. There is no gravitational influence. That yes, there must yes. be something else, or or let's say an understanding of gravity which goes beyond that inverse yeah. square law, which yes, of course is also the so-called constant fixed part. In big G, that questions yes. that constancy of the big G because there must be a deeper law be behind which in first yes. approximation is is fine and, and wonderful, but it's not the end of the story. Yes. Yeah. And so, if your audience, if they just think about these four experiments and of its four consequences, which are very different in Newtonian and in Machian mechanics. That will be wonderful, Alexander, of mm -hmm. our talk today. Yeah, because yeah. If maybe we should. We, we can should... even have more like thought experiments. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what would happen, for instance, for the flattening of the Earth mm -hmm. if we could annihilate, mm -hmm. make a magic like that, and all mm -hmm. these stars and galaxies disappear from the universe? Okay, <laughs> the, the, the Earth is spinning once a day. And mm -hmm. if we wish, you, we can let only one star very far away to be our reference. Mm -hmm. So that the Earth remains spinning relative to that far away star. But mm -hmm. all the other stars and galaxies disappear from the universe. Mm -hmm. will, so the question is, will the Earth remain flattened at the poles 0.4% as Newton mm -hmm. calculated? Or will it become spherical? It is still spinning once yeah. a day and relative not to an abstract frame of I reference see. observer, I see. I see. but relative to a real star. Mm -hmm. and, but we make magic and we annihilate. It's not that we put far away. They disappear from the universe somehow. Okay. I see. I Another see. thought experiment. Yeah. But, but it is very deep because mm -hmm. then we can think about the consequences. So mm -hmm. what will Newton would say and Mach would say. Mm -hmm. The answers, they are opposite. Yes. According yes, yes. to Newtonian mechanics, yeah. nothing will change. As the yeah. Earth still rotates once a day, it will mm -hmm. remain flattened by 0.4%. Mm -hmm. According to Ernest Mach, on the other hand, the amount of flattening should depend not only on the rate of rotation of the Earth, but on the amount of matter which is outside the Earth. Of if course, that that's the big question. Here, and mm -hmm. there is only one star, the Earth mm -hmm. will become essentially spherical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. spinning relative to that yeah. faraway star, but it should become spherical. Any theory implementing Mahian, Mach's ideas must 
leads to this consequence. Yeah, maybe we should clarify another thing because people are, are know about Einstein's general relativity, and sometimes they're not clear about that. Since Einstein was inspired by Mach, yeah. demonstrably there is an exchange of letters. But uh, Einstein's general relativity, nonetheless, is not Machian. We must not at all. Not at all. Because uh, the problem we mentioned here, uh, this coincidence of frames, is not explained by general no, relativity. No, not at all. And maybe even more importantly, also the gravitational constant is not explained by. Yes, general relativity. It's taken as a constant. I yes. mean, he prefers to put it as kappa. That means eight yes. p uh, divided by eight p g divided by c to the fourth power. However, uh, Einsteinian theory still considers um, still considers the gravitational constant as a constant. Yes, as exactly. The God given number, yes. and that's is <laughs> unsatisfactory and ironic, by the way, because Einstein complained about God given numbers. Yes, <laughs> no place in the fundamental theory of, of physics, and he puts the very God given number. Yes, yes, in the, the same as regards light velocity as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, and, so it should make just make me, clear that it's not because someone might think, oh, that's all resolved with Einstein. No, it's no, not. No, it's, it's not. Unresolved. And, and if you allow me, Alexander, just mm -hmm. to complement your comment here, which is very important, that Einstein's general theory of relativity was inspired by Ernest Mach, but in the end, it did not implement Machian ideas. Yeah. And yeah. Einstein did visit Ernest Mach, I believe it was in Vienna, Yes, and it was 1913 or so. I think it was an exchange of letters. They, they did have exchange of letters, but he did also went oh, there also personally. Visited, yeah, yeah. Einstein and appreciated did, Mach very much. Yeah. He did meet uh, Ernest Mach, mm -hmm. and then uh, Ernest Mach died in 1916. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Einstein did send him a, a just almost final general theory of relativity by letter mm -hmm. and send it to him and. Mm, Ernest Mach had the opportunity to read it, essentially the general theory of relativity. But then in the last book of Ernest Mach, The Principle of Physical Optics, which was published only after his death, but then in the preface of his book, of this book, Ernest Mach said that he was not accepting the present Einsteinian theory of relativity. Yeah. He understood it. He rejected it. Einstein's theory of relativity. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. his ideas did inspire mm -hmm. Ernest Mach. But yeah. Mach said, what uh, was made by this theory is yeah. not my ideas. They are not I see, I see. with my ideas. Was, he rejected them. Yeah, he was very reluctant. He he was yes. also a little bit annoyed, even that he 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 felt a little bit used as a popularizer of yes. relativity and didn't like that role. However, that, yeah, you might consider that a historical detail. And I mean, Mark was very old, but I think, yeah, maybe, I mean, they have clearly, there are some things in common, but yes. uh, you can distinguish, it's, it's interesting to distinguish the two approaches by Einstein and Mach. And Einstein, um, if he talks about relativity, Einstein, talks about uh, systems of reference yes yes it says uh if one system moves relative with constant velocity there ought to be the very same laws of nature and so on and the force and then he talks about these uh, frames this inertial frames yes. moving with constant uh, velocity relative to each other and then extends this thought to accelerated frames of reference but he's always talking let's say with these mathematical concepts yes, of yes. frames of reverend, reference and uh, then you have groups and Lorentz groups uh, performing operations on on these on these uh, frames and and deducing or postulating the the valid, validity of of laws of nature the idea of re of relativity put forth by mach is different yes there is this relativity he says he always talks about a relative motion. Yes, okay, that's yes. the central um, central concept, and he says that 
doesn't make sense if we have any law of nature depending on absolute yes, motion with respect course. to whatsoever, but everything must depend on the relative motion yes, of the yes. particles. And in turn, also a big step, uh, depend on the relative acceleration. Yes, of course. Of bodies. And of that's, the, that's the tiny little difference how and, Einstein and Muff yes. use the word relativity. They are both relativists in the sense and, but uh, they use it differently with also different outcomes then if you allow me i would just make my last comment because i think we have already almost one and a half hour now no, it's fine i think i mean no no yeah. but, but i, I think too. i would just people can say, switch off if you're too boring but no no no, no <laughs> but uh, i just mentioned two things so hmm. for those of your audience who have an interest my own work i have uh, there is this one which you presented about uh, the, with these two buckets in the cover but I have a much larger one and much deeper one the title is relational mechanics and the implementation of Mach's principle with mm -hmm. Weber's gravitational force which yeah we'll display that yeah and mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, available in PDF in my homepage. I, I hope you will mm -hmm. put that in See the description below in the comments you'll find of, it yeah. of the video mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so there people can find a mathematical theory based on Weber's law, which we spoke the Yeah, that was my question. You... The question was I wanted to, to ask you. But so. I, 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 I think that that's not, not, not today, not today, maybe another yeah. day. But... Yeah, but I mean, if interesting, if you just given a little idea, I mean, yeah, but, but to, to, may, may, no, may, because... may. Maybe nicely, another day. So nicely links to the other video because you have, I can display Weber's formula, how he modified Coulomb's law, and yeah, of course yes. there's a deep but, analogy between the gravitational yes, electric but, but force, I think, uh, that, that's what inspired you, after If all, people you know? ju just go to the previous talk that we discussed, Ampere and Weber, that, that will be enough. Ju mm -hmm. Just to close, so I came this time to Germany, as I said mm -hmm. in the other video as well, by an invitation to work at Augsburg University on mm -hmm. the fifth volume of the English translation of Weber's main works on electrodynamics mm -hmm. and the fourth book of that we did publish already has uh, a unification of electrodynamics with gravitation and with inertia we discuss it there and so i will stay here in augsburg until the end of december of 2023 working once more in weber's electrodynamics so mm -hmm. i am as you have my contact so anyone mm -hmm. who is I am uh, willing yeah. to discuss these topics. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think for today, I thank you very much. You really, you really want to stop place. here? You really want to stop? No, or, or you yes, have yes, yes. one no, question? No, no. I, I think for today that that's okay. enough. Okay, so we will that discuss that in person before. Too many ideas that we discussed, very deep, and I think okay. anyone should, in the first place, think about them and yeah. see which answer that you give to each one of these questions that myself and you, Alex, and that we put here in this talk today. Yeah, yeah. To just think, and before yeah. you read anything, before you go in the internet, before you go in the textbooks, just each think one of you, yourself. think You're about right. and see. Yes. Your answer is Newtonian, yeah. Machian, or a third alternative. It can be many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, 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 no, I, I, I agree one... with you. I agree with you because it's not, I really think this is the right approach. And we're not, I, I mean, I repeat this. We are not here to tell you we are the Mavericks. Uh, and no, no, no. Who have invented or have these solutions. No, no. The very first thing you, you need to understand is that there is a problem. We yes, still have a problem. Sure. There is something something to solve something to reflect upon and, and something yes. to discover if you take mark's principle seriously and that and i think that's the message we want to convey right yes and even even i i tell you very seriously if someone here and may, many i believe will be newtonians mm -hmm. i think that's also wonderful mm -hmm. to me there was there was never any scientist so great so important and for the next uh, in, while there is human person on earth or in any planet he will never be surprised surprised yeah, because okay a, but well a, a someone genius. else someone else stood on his shoulders right yes and, yes and but still, you see still there some, is no even more profound insight yes. even if 
Newton remains. Yeah, the but, but what, what I want to say is, even if someone is Newton, that's perfect. Not only mm -hmm. perfect, you are in an excellent company because he's the greatest genius who has mm -hmm. ever lived. And so, mm -hmm. and we we will never know these questions for these topics that mm -hmm. we did discuss today because they are thought experiments. Maybe okay. other they these thought experiments they inspire other that we can do in the laboratory and so on. Mm -hmm. For instance, ju just to tell you okay just a possible experiment i cannot okay. predict the universe but okay. I, could, I could have for instance this bucket here mm -hmm. and i could put a glass shell around the bucket mm -hmm. and rotate only the glass shell relative to the ground mm -hmm. okay so myself the ground the bucket and the water we are at rest relative to the ground and mm -hmm. I rotate a glass shell once a second. Mm -hmm. This I can do in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we don't observe any uh, curvature of the water. I but see. we can also perform calculations. Mm -hmm. What will be the shape according to Newtonian mechanics, according to Einstein general theory of relativity, or according to relational mechanics, which I work with. And we... Mm -hmm. So you in this case, in principle, you could go to the laboratory and try. Mm -hmm. But I you think can that's also basically calculate. the lens steering, right? The lens lens steering. The yes, lens steering. yes, correct. Which is something something uh, different from Newton and and, and in favor of Einstein, but yes. still does not fully resolve. Yes, does not the, fully the compatible okay. with relativity. But you see, you th this. This, oh, to rotate the universe, that's fantasy. Yeah, that's fantasy. But that leads you to a real experiment that you can mm -hmm. do here. I can mm -hmm. rotate the glass shell with my hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Once a second. Around, and then we don't observe. But then, we, as you said, Alexander, what will happen if each time the, the glass shell is thicker and thicker mm -hmm. and thicker? Mm -hmm. One ton. And then okay. one billion tons of matter is spinning once a second. Eventually, Maybe. that would eventually. cause a measurable effect. I see. Mm. And see, so yeah. I think this we can okay. close now because we discussed yeah. many yes, important let's, talks. Let's inspire the audience to go back yes. to these beautiful old papers, and I will list all the stuff in the comments. And yeah, at this point, thank you very much again for the. And thank you very much, Alexander, for the second and time that I'm here. We'll with see you. soon. And if okay. anyone wish, I will be in Germany until the end of December. Bye Goodbye. bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.